In this video, I'll be demonstrating the effects of using a double tagging VLAN hopping attack to send an ICMP packet to a virtual machine located on a separate VLAN than the attacking system. In this scenario, the attacker is using a physical Kali system connected to a native VLAN access port on the Cisco 2950. There's a trunk connection between the first Cisco 2950 switch and the second Cisco 2950, which is connected to each of the hypervisor environments. Each hypervisor environment is connected to the second Cisco 2950 via a trunk port, as per best practices, with the target virtual machines being located on VLAN 20. Let's check out the configuration on the first Cisco 2950 switch. Okay, this is the access switch that the attacking system is connected to. Uh, the attacker is connected to port 1 on the switch, which is configured as a standard access point port on the native VLAN. Here we can see it's on the native VLAN, um, and it's just status of connected, it's not trunked. And we can verify that. Um, we can see that it's using the status of not trunking and the native VLAN of 1. Okay, the uplink port on this switch is port 24, so let's check that port out. And we can see that this port is set up as a trunk. And the trunk settings are set for 802.1 encapsulation, and the native VLAN is set to 1. Uh, this port also ac has access to VLAN 20. Okay, so let's go over to the second switch now and check out that configuration. Uh, this is the switch that all the hypervisor environments are connected to. Um, it's also, it has an uplink that's a trunk between uh, this switch and the first switch we just looked at. Um, so the hypervisor environment we're going to be looking at today is Proxmox, um, and that system is connected to port 29 on the switch. Uh, so we'll do show int FA029 status, and we'll see that as per best practices, this is set up as a trunk port. Um, and it is connected. And we can see that it is using trunking. The native VLAN is 1, and the encapsulation is set to 802.1Q. Okay, let's check out the uplink port now, going through the first switch, and that's on port 48. And we can see that that is connected as a trunk as well. And we can see that it's set up for trunking, 802.1Q encapsulation, and the native VLAN of 1, and it's also allowing that VLAN 20 over that trunk. Okay, so now let's look at the attacking system and the target system here. So this system here is our attacker system. It's just a uh, physical Kali box. Uh, we're SSH'd in. Um, it's multi-home, so we have access to the internet, and we also have access to our um, separate isolated VLAN test network here. And this second machine over here, this is our Kali system. It's a VM that's hosted in the Proxmox environment. So on this system, what we're just going to do is we're going to use TCP dump to monitor for ICMP traffic. So we'll just do TCP dump minus VV, pipe grep, ICMP, and we'll just let that guy run. Over on the attacker, we're going to run Yersinia um, in command mode or interactive mode. Since it's multi-homed, it, it defaulted to ETH0, but that's not the interface we want to use, so we're just going to use I here. We're going to turn that interface off, and we're going to turn ETH2 on, which is the interface that's connected to our isolated test network. You can see it made the change there. So now we're going to change over to 802.1Q mode, which is just pressing G to choose the protocol mode. We're going to choose Enter here. And then what we want to do is we want to edit these settings down here on the bottom so they're specific to our current VLANs that we're trying to target. Um, so we're going to use the E key to edit, um, and then we're going to go down through, and we want VLAN 1, which is the first tag that we're setting. And here we're going to change over to VLAN 2, 1T, so we got 2 and a 0 there we put for input. And then source IP, we're just going to spoof something here, so 5005, and we want to send that to 192.168.001. And 11 is our target system over here. And we can just verify that by just doing a inf config on this system, and we see that it is using 192.168.1.11. Okay, so we're all set over here. Uh, we're going to hit X to run the attack, and then 1. We can see up here that it did run the DT, or the, it sent the packet out, the ICMP packet, um, on ETH2. 
using the source IP of 192.168.5.5 and the destination pack IP of 192.168.1.11. We're seeing over here there's nothing really in this window yet, but it could be a little bit laggy, so we're just going to keep running that attack a few times. It doesn't update up here, but if we were watching this on Wireshark, we would start seeing a lot of packets going through. Ah, there it is. Here we can see we successfully sent from 192.168.5.5 over to Kali1. This TCP dump just used the host name to resolve to the 192.168.1.11. Um, and we see the ICMP echo request. So it got the request, but it can't push back a reply because this is a one-way attack. So we can send something to the VLAN, uh, but it's not going to come back. And here's a whole bunch more spilling in um, from all those attacks we were running there. So this attack effectively worked. We were able to uh, send a frame from one VLAN to another um, through two switches into a virtualized environment.